Welcome to the third annual Grand Payday 2 Mod Showcase, bringing to your attention many of the best mods 2022 had to offer, alongside updated experiences and gems from the past I've missed out on. Just to clear things up, this series has gained a bit of a reputation in the past for sometimes giving too much of a spotlight to the less than savoury mod options out there. I want to wholeheartedly apologise and confirm that today we'll only be considering the most refined and tasteful creations that can be enjoyed by all. For example, wait, hang on a minute, what's that? Oh no 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 no, you said I didn't have to do that this year. I'm gonna, oh, wow, not there too. My weapons, I was gonna, oh, Joy, what have they done to you? They're everywhere. I knew we wouldn't be going down that road again this year. This channel has matured, we have sponsors now, and you know I need to appeal to... Oh. Well, that settles it. Mods this year are just as astonishing as ever. There's no getting around it, from getting dunked on by cloakers to acting sus in heist. Payday mods in 2022 are impeccable. Now that you've seen the depths of depravity on offer to the Payday community, it is actually time to start exploring the brilliant community creations that will keep the game as fresh as the day it was released, even 9 years later. As ever, this video will be broken up loosely into mod categories, so if there's a particular element of the game you want to see improved upon, feel free to jump forward to any of the timestamps below. First things first, let's take a look at the mods centered around graphical improvements and general aesthetic changes, starting off with Visual Fixes by Dorpenka. Of course, often seen as a companion mod to The Fixes, a creation which aims to remove many of Payday 2's most notorious bugs, Visual Fixes, as the name suggests, targets dozens of minor visual bugs and inconsistencies in the game, makes them appear as was originally intended, and will subtly improve the way Payday looks and feels. It's certainly not a texture overhaul, but sometimes all you need are a few tweaks to make a world infinitely more immersive and believable. It adds certain shadow textures, fixes common issues with the lighting engine, and reintroduces otherwise missing textures and effects. Not to mention, this mod is exceptionally well maintained, even coming in clutch to fix the recently added Viper grenades so they appear as you see in your inventory when actually thrown. A simple must install in my opinion. The Particle Massacre, on the other hand, will probably be a little more like Marmite to the community. Insanely smooth, tasty Marmite, might I add, but even so, not everyone enjoys seeing non vanilla textures and effects. I personally, though, am a huge fan of them, and I'm inclined to suggest that Particle Massacre offers the complete package by drawing on the work of its predecessors expertly, who also deserve a ton of credit. Zilly Bobber has taken the Hollywood shootout concept and roll with it, including impressive muzzle flashes, brutal blood effects, and more immersive explosions. I found gunfights to simply be more engaging with this mod installed, as tracer rounds flew by and flashy bullet impacts reinforced my use of cover. Not to mention the overall improvements to Payday 2's lackluster fire effects. This mod oozes value and feels like a must-have graphical and realism expansion for anyone seeking a little more grit and cinematic style from their games. Of course, throughout this video I'll be using HUD mods, this time I've chosen two I'd never used previously to get another fresh perspective on the game. MUI, or Minimalist UI, is a simplistic HUD redesign that aims to reduce the amount of clutter you're seeing on screen. As ever, for a good HUD mod, it has to be highly customizable and solve an issue with the base game's offering. This does both brilliantly, being easy to adjust in real time and reducing the information overload Payday is renowned for. As such, it's particularly good for veteran players who don't need large visual prompts on screen at all times, although keep in mind this is not an info hood, so will not provide you with useful information such as enemy health and damage indicators. This is where my secondary hood for this video comes in, Noble Hood. This is quite the opposite of the minimalist ideology, aiming to recreate the Halo Reach heads up display in Payday 2. It does so absolutely brilliantly, so Halo fans should get a kick out of this one. To amp up the value of this mod for everyone else though, it comes with a bunch of exclusive features going beyond the usual buff tracker and damage indicators, coming with its own fully functioning minimap to highlight enemy positions, as well as a score and kill counter, complete with the famous narration. Truly, these are some of the best hood options on the market, catering to both purists and those who want to really shake up their experience with the game, quickly becoming top recommendations of mine whenever asked to suggest a new custom hood. You'll see me switch between the two at different stages of the showcase, as I think both have their merits for different players. 
alongside user face improvements, I've also gone to the liberty of downloading a few more specific world changing modifications, including the absolutely wonderful Bored Ape NFT art gallery. Now when robbing the Washington Gallery, we can enjoy some of the best digital art on the market, completely free of church. What, sorry, I'm not allowed to showcase these? The cease and desist is in the mail. I've just spoiled the plot of Payday 3, sorry folks, ignore what you've just seen, I'm, let's just try this gallery instead. The Bob Ross Art Gallery, a truly ancient mod at this point, but one that most certainly deserves a showcase if monkey art isn't doing it for you. This mod turns Payday 2's gallery into an infinitely more relaxing experience with some truly breathtaking works by the late great artist. Give it a go if you want to be truly proud of the art you're stealing. Up next, I thought I'd quickly run through some of the quality of life improvements I like to install to subtly improve anyone's experience with the game without really impacting the essence of it. Better Perk Deck Description by Hinaomi does exactly what you'd expect it to, fixing the usually confusing and inconsistent base game text that attempts to describe how Perk Decks operate. Veterans of the game may already have an understanding of these nuances, but this is a particularly useful mod for players newer to the game who may not know about usually hidden information such as the additional dodge from Hacker or the extended melee damage duration in Infiltrator, a great example of a mod that should already be implemented by the devs. The continued version of Fastnet Standalone by Test1 is another of those useful mods that improves upon what Overkill have initially given us, streamlining the often obtrusive matchmaking system to allow you to find public heists far easier. Instead of a poorly presented splodge of lobbies, with this mod you can see every heist that's being run in an online match to join the perfect group for you, even getting extra details such as whether the group are in a heist or in the lobby to avoid those awkwardly timed connections. A must have for any public game player. A couple of quickfire ones for you now, XP Briefings is a mod worth having for those of you looking to maximise that experience grind, giving detailed XP per minute estimates to compare the efficiency of all heists in the game. A massive improvement on the often incorrect and confusing legacy system. You can now even filter heists by XPM which is also a very useful tool. Simple toggleable interactions is a mod that I'm sure my girlfriend would have appreciated when she first tried Payday 2. You see, Payday's press to hold mechanic is sometimes a little clunky and can often lead to unfortunate accidents, especially when answering pages. By making these interactions work on a single button input toggle, you avoid all that jeopardy and save on finger strain in the process. Finally, the drag and drop inventory is a wonder of modern science, enabling us to mouse over items in our inventories and move them from location to location and page to page in an instant. This mod is so intuitive in how it works, making inventory management a cinch and simply should be implemented as a permanent feature. Moving on, let's play around with a few animations. Do cloakers get you down, flipping all over the place, knocking you down, ruining a heist and then rubbing it in? Well, how would you feel if they hit you with the California girls moves instead? Worse? Good, it's working. Now, if you don't want just the cloakers having all the fun, why not start torturing the entire DC population with one of the most ridiculous mods I've ever recommended, Wingding. You've already seen this in action at the start of the video, but to elaborate on that strange sight, Wingding essentially grants you full control over the suite of animations characters can enter. This can get real wild when you decide to bring out the pole dancers. Whilst not a mod I can recommend for long term usage, I think just about everyone can appreciate the levity this brings to an intense heist situation. Probably the most I've giggled playing Payday 2 in years. When it comes to character animations, I'm also happy to feature the Better Melee Animation mod, which doesn't overhaul the system so much as it simply fixes a number of the less sensible melee animations out there. A great example is the Hockey Stick, which for some reason we normally limply swing one-handed. By switching it over to the Baseball Bat animation, it looks like you're actually packing a punch rather than swatting a fly. Time now to talk audio mods, an increasingly popular category which can really impact your experience with the game. Responsive Responders by Red Flame brings back a number of unused cop lines to make the cops feel like more of a living and breathing nemesis, pairing well with some mods I'll be discussing later which actually succeed in making the responders a little less robotic in their fight against the gang. I'd also recommend amping up their volume with the actually audible cops to get the full experience with this one and raise those immersion levels in the process.
In addition to these mods, the beta for Project Cell is shaping up to be one of the most ambitious audio overhauls ever seen, and even at this early stage in development is well worth trying out. Not only is this mod very well supported at the moment, it will make your heister, your crew and everyone else involved in the heist infinitely more talkative, adding many unused or highly specific trigger lines throughout every heist, making it almost as if the crew are actively communicating with each other and yelling encouragement. This is an area I'd love to see Overkill make huge progress with in Payday 3, but until then, having a more dynamic and personality driven crew is only a mod installation away over on PC. I can't get enough of hearing Jimmy's dulcet tones, although fair warning, if you're picking up a lot of kills and are generally active in the heist, expect to yell lines over each other, possibly breaking the extra immersion we're aiming for. From my perspective though, you can never have too much of Jimmy screaming. Next up, we're on to the real bread and butter of Payday modding, retexturing things to make absolutely zero logical sense. Take for example, Ichiban Kasuga. What's he doing here? This isn't Yakuza, this is Payday 2. Don't start thinking like that. The question you should be asking yourself is, where's that sussy Among Us fella from similarly titled Betrayal Simulator? Yeah, that's better. The entire Among Us gang is here to ruin the sanctity of Payday 2 as a gritty and realistic crime shooter, and I wouldn't have it any other way. If the imposter paranoia is too much for you to handle though, why not just try installing the Among Us gauge packages? These cute little guys enhanced my package finding experience and kept an archaic mechanic from back in 2014 surprisingly fresh, even if the meme itself is a little crusty at this stage. Back on the topic of legendary armor reskins, I also want to point out Travis Touchdown from No More Heroes, a franchise very close to my heart, who would be one of my top picks for a crossover character if Nintendo ever decided to start playing corporate ball. This is a mod that lets me live at least a fraction of that dream, which is all we can ever really ask for. Once again, the star of seemingly any conversation around Payday 2 modding is Matt Helzor, creating some of the best mods in the business. The definitive version of the Scarface overhaul is another wonderful example of this. Everything is of the highest quality, from the trailer to the mod page, and of course the mod itself, transforming Payday 2's Tony into the real Tony Montana. There's no longer any room for discussion of imposters. The new face is impeccable, the first person model is unique and stylish, and of course designed to work with all in-game outfits, masks and armor types. After just a few minutes with him, you'll realize that this new version of Scarface is the definitive one for Payday 2. But if entire character overhauls are a little too much for you, and you'd rather skate closer to that vanilla experience, why not try out the actually cyber cyber trench, taking some of the best recent DLC outfits and enhancing them to make them truly stand out. Talking of enhanced. Uh, whoa, 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 I don't think I can show this one. Come back later for the After Dark show, ladies and gents. Of course, it's not just the heisters that can benefit from reskins and retextures. Our arsenal of weapons is just as ripe for the modern community to tackle and enhance. One way of achieving that is exceptionally simple, but also pretty genius. Frag Train's Super Duper Skin Swapper allows you to apply previously unlocked weapon skins to any weapon in the game. Now, not all of these will turn out to be masterpieces, but what's great about this is that in general, weapon skins bring a little more uniqueness to a weapon over the later added color system. This allows you to create some of the most interesting weapon setups in the game simply by using weapon skins you already own. I was a huge fan of the Tribal Feud when equipped with larger weapons such as the Over 9000 Saw. What a clever mod that seriously multiplies the value of weapon skins in Payday 2. Other creators though, like Cyril the Roach, have taken it upon themselves to make hundreds of dollars worth of weapon color DLCs entirely for free. Here I'm showcasing the luxurious weapon colors mod, but I seriously recommend taking a look at Cyril's whole collection. It includes tons of original creations, as well as some D skins, allowing you to use particularly popular preset weapon skins on any weapon, much like the skin swapper. The value of these creations is immense and really does augment the vanilla offerings impressively. If you're more interested in weapon peripherals though, why not try out prettier lasers by the one and only Hoppit? This gets rid of that glaring laser beam from the end of your weapon in favor of a more realistic and stylish fade out. The lasers still get their job done nicely, making an impact on any solid object, just without the disco lights in between. And again, if subtle improvements float your boat, I recommend installing Weapon Shadows, another Hoppip creation, which should add a little immersion by adding much needed shadows to the weapons of both the player character and NPCs. Instead of having strangely vampiric weapons without a shadow in sight, you will finally get to see the weapon you're carrying cast a reality affirming shadow. Sometimes in life, it's the little things. 
Now, I know for some people, that isn't enough. They don't just want to play around with better looking weaponry, they want to try something altogether new, which is where the custom weapon community comes in, creating DLC ready editions, all in the package of a free mod. Some of these even err on the side of realism. Take for example the PPSH-41, a standalone SMG unlocked at level 33 with some of the highest quality animations you will ever see in game. Easily this could be an official overkill edition, even fitting into that World War II niche around Raid's release. Why am I talking about this several years after it came out? Well this thing is being updated, making a stable and surprisingly well balanced option definitely worth trying out if you want to dip your toes into the world of custom weapons. If you've been around the block though, and think you're ready for something entirely out of the realms of payday realism and balance, the Typhoon is where I turn next. This futuristic weapon has been ported across from Crisis 3 and packs a sort of power that verges on the game breaking. You see, whilst for all intents and purposes it's an SMG, it actually shoots 10 pellets per trigger pull, meaning this ammo guzzling machine has some of the highest DPS potential in the game. To make things even more fun for users, it has an entirely unique set of custom animations, as well as ragdolling down cops for extra satisfaction, and to reinforce just how damn powerful this thing is. I'd definitely save it for use on the game's hardest difficulties, as it clearly breaks the intended power curve. Tell me again that the Hailstorm's OP. If you're after something a little more balanced, my recommendation would be the Vanilla Mod Pack, another restoration mod which brings back 11 seemingly cut weapons seamlessly into the game. These all come fully kitted out with 165 new attachments in total and have been lovingly restored with custom animations and by taking content from the full library of Starbreeze produced first person shooters. This is very much a finished and lovingly maintained project, so if you want 11 brilliant new weapons free of charge without having to shop around for individual downloads, look no further than here. However, we all know that there's one weapon still missing. One that the Payday community has clamoured for over the past year. The Musket. Fortunately, two months ago, our prayers were answered. Through the power of mods, the Antique Musket has finally arrived and is a monster of a rifle with Thanatos-like stats. Its custom animations are absolutely perfect, packing an incredibly impressive punch and genuinely feeling viable, which is a surprise for such a slowly reloading sniper. This is further proof of the theory that, if the question is asked loudly enough, the Payday community will build it, even if Overkill won't. I have a final example of that taking place actually. This one is a little more personal to me. Yep, that's the Potato Masher exploding on melee hit like a grenade. Yelwonk has never been more honoured than to have a mod made in the wake of his challenge run. It made all of that suffering on the road to becoming the best demo man around just about worth it. It's still not quite the Ullapool Caber, seeing as it instantly reloads itself for endless explosions, possibly making it a little too strong, but I'm never going to complain about a mod creation so pure and beautiful. Thank you for the honour, punished Bernadetta. It was recently pointed out to me that I need to spend more time appreciating the work of the incredibly talented custom heist community. The time invested in crafting an entire heist, often from scratch with custom voice lines, assets and objectives, is basically unparalleled within the wider modding community. With that in mind, I want to do justice to these heists by giving them the analysis they deserve, so my intention is to actually create a separate mod video showcasing the biggest and best custom heists out there, and hopefully giving you guys hours and hours of new content to experience for the first time. However, it wouldn't be the annual Noli mod video without giving you a taste of what to expect from these map creators. First up, for those of you who want an impeccably crafted multi-day heist with an extended custom narrative, look no further than Hunter and Hunted. This is the finale in a series of Russian heists by Kyrios, which truly goes out with a bang. Expect assassination, intense gunplay with additional allies and a developing storyline which takes us from a repurposed daytime variant of Framing Frame to a sprawling airstrip gunfight and then finally into the sky ourselves. Prepare for a genuinely cinematic and challenging experience which I found to be immaculately paced and driven by stellar voice acting throughout. The only thing that gives it away as a custom build is the fact that it's spread over 3 days which, if you're craving the old times, may not be such a bad thing at all. I stumbled upon a few strange geometry bugs, but other than that, Hunter and Hunted is a truly polished experience, well worth checking out. However, if you think this is too similar to the professionally made heist we have in game and want something truly unique, why not give Sniper Assassin a download, the first and only long range sniper stealth heist in the game. I've always wanted Overkill to expand stealth Hitman style, and this heist is the perfect blueprint for that, giving us info on 5 targets we're meant to take out from a distance without alerting the entire building and breaking stealth. 
Watching to learn the behaviours of these marks is key, which is probably more sophisticated than anything we've seen from stealth in the base game. Whilst quite a short heist once you know what you're doing, there's loads of replayability here, and something just truly unique about the experience that you can't find anywhere else in game. A top notch concept executed to perfection. Finally, if you're after something a little wackier, why not try the double download of California Heat plus Alminus Games? Both highs can be tackled in stealth first and foremost, which is an excellent addition to see, with California Heat seeing us take on an entirely new form of drug to the Payday Gang, burning a plantation and stealing some of the product for later. But I adored the multi-enemy boss fight towards the end of this one, it was a unique set piece that felt like an all-out gang war. Quite the impressive crescendo for an otherwise unassuming heist. Almir's Games takes place within the same general map space with an incredible payday themed twist that needs to be seen to be believed. It's a worthwhile addition to the overall bundle and shows the creativity of Oriz Tov and the team. The many custom assets used in this heist help to add to its charm and individuality, undoubtedly another top tier custom heist well worth your time. I may well be revisiting these heists in more detail in the not too distant future, but until then, let's talk gameplay overhauls. As ever, these are some of the most divisive mods I can cover, but also some of the most impactful and impressive. First, allow me to gush over Lies, also known as Little Intelligence Enhancements. This mod doesn't try to change the world in one go, instead choosing to improve just about every individual aspect of Payday's janky AI behaviour until we're left with a different, in my opinion, superior game experience overall. I'd be here all day if I discussed every feature of this one, but most importantly it aims and succeeds in improving AI pathing, targeting, its ability to take cover, and even throw in some less conventional tactics such as finding nearby medics or shields to group with, and focus on lone heisters based on their proximity to the main group. Honestly, just about every AI feature has been improved by this monolith of a mod, so if you're prepared to start fighting against legions of well-trained SWAT troops instead of the usual very special forces lemmings, I implore you to give this a go. And while you're at it, why not augment how these newly buffed enemies look and feel to shoot with the actually so much win enemies mod. This redesigns the enemy lineups across all difficulties to increase the SWAT diversity with clean and impressive military looks. Shooting visors and dozers with this mod installed has never been so satisfying thanks to new bullet impact effects, which again just improves the entire flow of combat. Beyond impressive. Finally, for difficulty tweaking mods, I need to mention the recently uploaded Deathwish Plus. I've heard many people suggest that Deathwish is their favourite difficulty, so I see no reason why we shouldn't try and enhance it. One thing I love with this is the addition of non-town enemy types to this difficulty, adding more variety to the assaulting waves on Deathwish. Another interesting addition to this mod is active loud cuffing, allowing cops to cuff heisters and interrupt interactions if not stopped in the process. A pretty innovative expansion of an otherwise underutilised mechanic. Where this mod may be slightly divisive is in the increased spawn rate and capacity it adds to Deathwish. Payday 2 is already a horde shooter at this point, but Deathwish Plus certainly puts the emphasis on horde. Expect dozens of all types of enemies to fill your screen almost constantly. From my testing, this ended up being a little over the top, requiring incredibly overpowered setups to really handle, but this is the kind of thing I think you need to try for yourself. Maybe you'll enjoy the enemy spawning madness that is Deathwish Plus, I'd just be careful coupling it with lies, you don't want to end up with a smart swarm of cops. The final mod I'll be covering in this year's showcase is Classic Heisting Reborn, another older but well maintained mod which provides an incredibly nostalgic experience with a twist. You guys might remember me going back in time to try 2013 Payday last year, well Classic Heisting allows you to do exactly that without all the strain and stress of messing around with Steam version backups, taking us to the promised ground of famed update 24.2. If you weren't a fan of the horde madness of Deathwish Plus, maybe this is the ideal mod for you to try, taking Payday back to a simpler time where enemies felt more dangerous but didn't end up taking over every pixel on your screen. Money matters back then and there were only 1% of the infamy levels we have access to today not to mention a fraction of the arsenal and an entirely different set of skills and mechanics to play around with. This is Retro Payday, brought to you in the clean, safe form of a mod, and I adore it. There is honestly so much value to be had in those old mechanics. Gunfights always felt more critical, build choice was varied and involved a lot more specialisation, armour, not perk decks, dictated how a heister could play. It was a simpler time, and in some ways a better time. Well worth trying if you missed it, or nostalgically reminiscing if you're anything like me. The huge advantage this mod also has over actual update resetting is that we're still able to play more modern heists in this patch. 
If you want to see how a heist like Brooklyn 1010 would have felt back in 2014, look no further. You can now play it in all its classic glory. What a mod. What a series of incredible mods, I don't think I could have hoped for a better showcase, and above all, what a modding community. For all the smut you guys come out with, you don't half make up for it with professional quality editions I love to come back for year after year. If you'd like the look of any of the mods showcased in this video, head on down to the links in the description, everything will be linked in appearance order, give them a download and remember to celebrate the mod creators who make videos like these possible. If you've appreciated the time I've spent playtesting and analysing these creations for today's video, feel free to drop a like and subscribe, and if you can go the extra mile, head on over to the Apex Gaming PC website and consider a purchase of one of my gaming PCs, which won't experience the potential performance dip running this many crazy mods might induce. I've truly enjoyed every minute spent putting together 2022's mod showcase. Bring on 2023 when we'll hopefully be passing the baton over to Payday 3 and sending off Payday 2's thousands of mods in style. Thank you for watching, I'll see you all very soon. A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24 hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.